What's up guys, I'm Ira Rochelle and this is The End Times. There's currently a divide in the church over the time that the rapture will take place. Some believe that the rapture will take place prior to the tribulation, whereas others believe that the rapture will take place mid-tribulation, and others believe that the rapture will take place after the tribulation. Now, one of the verses that I've recently watched a pastor use to prove the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine is the seven churches of Revelation. The seven churches of Revelation are seven churches in Asia at the time of John that Jesus had seven messages for. Now, each of these churches also represent the seven ages of the church. Now, maybe that needs a video all on its own. Let me know if you think so as well. But if you go through and read each letter to each church, as I would urge you all to do, when you get to the sixth church, Jesus says something very interesting in verse 10. So keep an eye out for that. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 13. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, The words of the Holy One, the True One who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, who shuts and no one opens. I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Behold, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and are not, but lie. Behold, I will make them come and bow down before your feet, and they will learn that I have loved you, because you have kept my word about patient endurance. I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world, to try those who dwell on the earth. I am coming soon, hold fast what you have, so that no one may seize your crown. The one who conquers, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. The one who conquers, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Never shall he go out of it. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from my God out of heaven and my own name and my own new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, according to verse 10, Jesus tells the church in Philadelphia that they will be kept from the hour of trial that's coming upon the church. Many believe this verse is proof that the tribulation takes place after the rapture. Now, that sounds really good. That sounds great. I'm I'm here for it. I am all for it. I don't want to go through the tribulation. The only problem is that there's another church after the church in Philadelphia. Revelation chapter 3 verse 14 through 32. And to the angel of the church in Laodicea, the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire, so that you may be rich, and white garments, so that you may clothe yourself, and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen, and salve to anoint your eyes, so that you may see. Those whom I love I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne, as I also conquered and sat with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now the biggest difference between these two churches is that the church in Laodicea is neither hot nor cold. They're lukewarm. This is the literal definition of the church today. We have one foot in the church and one foot in the world. Therefore, how can this prove the pre-tribulation rapture? To me, it only further proves that this generation of the church will go through the tribulation. This now begs the question of why? If we go back to verse 10, Jesus said he was going to keep the church in Philadelphia from the hour of trial that was coming upon the earth. Why? Because they kept his word about patient endurance. In other words, Jesus didn't keep them from it as a reward because they were good and the church at Laodicea has to go through it because they were bad, but because the church at Philadelphia didn't usher in the tribulation with their actions. 
God doesn't do anything on earth unless mankind does something first. Why? Psalms 115 verse 16 says, The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to the children of man. The earth has been given into mankind's hands, is given to us. It's for us. This was ordained by God from the sixth day of creation. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 says, And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. How can we subdue something that doesn't belong to us? The earth is for mankind. The earth was created for mankind. It's ours. This is why God doesn't just intervene within the world. Instead, he only intervenes when his people pray when his people cry out. We on earth have to do a physical action in order to have a spiritual result. Look at the story of Hezekiah, Isaiah chapter 38, verse one through six. In those days, Hezekiah became sick and was at the point of death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and you shall not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord and said, please, O Lord, remember how I walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of David your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add fifteen years to your life. I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria and will defend this city. Hezekiah was king of Judah. He was going to die, but his action of prayer and seeking God in full humility caused him to be spared from death, from the illness, as well as being protected from the king of Assyria that had come against their sister nation Israel. Israel was given into the hands of Assyria because of their idolatry, and Judah was facing that same punishment. 2 Kings 17 verses 13-23 Yet the Lord warned Israel and Judah by every prophet and every seer, saying, Turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes in accordance with all the law that I commanded your fathers and that I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. But they would not listen, but were stubborn as their fathers had been, who did not believe in the Lord their God. They despised his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and the warnings that he gave them. They went after false idols and became false. And they followed the nations that were around them concerning whom the Lord had commanded them that they should not do like them. And they abandoned all the commandments of the Lord their God and made for themselves metal images of two calves. And they made an Asherah and worshipped all the host of heaven and served Baal. And they burned their sons and their daughters as offerings and used divination and omens and sold themselves to evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. None was left but the tribe of Judah only. Judah also did not keep the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the customs that Israel had introduced. And the Lord rejected all the descendants of Israel and afflicted them and gave them into the hands of plunderers until he had cast them out of his sight. When he had torn Israel from the house of David, they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king, and Jeroboam drove Israel from following the Lord and made them commit great sin. The people of Israel walked in all the sins that Jeroboam did. They did not depart from them until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight as he had spoken by all his servants, the prophets. So Israel was exiled from their own land to Assyria until this day. If Hezekiah had not repented and had not pleaded and humbled himself before God, all of these same trials and tribulations would have fallen upon Judah as well. When the people of God do not live and act as the people of God, the Lord has to spit them out of his mouth. He has to remove them from his presence, which includes his protection. 
Why? Because God is holy and righteous. How can we dwell in unrighteousness and also demand to dwell in the presence of a holy God that has no darkness in him? 1 John 1, 5-6 After Hezekiah receives his word from Isaiah, Isaiah gives him a warning against Babylon. 2 Kings 20, verse 16-19 Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and that which your fathers have stored up till this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And some of your sons who will come from you, whom you will father, shall be taken away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, The word of the Lord that you have spoken is good. For he thought, why not, if there will be peace and security in my days? In the days of Jehoiachin and Zedekiah, two of the last free kings of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar came into the land of Jerusalem and besieged the city. He carried the kings away into captivity. The words prophesied to Hezekiah had come to pass. Hezekiah put off this coming destruction by repenting and returning to the safety of the Lord, but Jehoiachin and Zedekiah did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and they refused to repent. So they removed themselves from the safety of the Lord and ushered in their own destruction and captivity. This is similar to the tribulation. It has been foretold. It's coming, but it has been put off. Each generation of the church has uphold righteousness and holiness enough not to see it in their day. But this generation, things have changed. You have outright sin on the platforms of churches and supposed pastors preaching sermons they claim are from God, endorsing it. Denominations are splitting over sins that have been settled before the law of Moses. There's no longer a differentiation between the church and the world. Both have grown to look the same in the past decade or so. This is the most lukewarm the church has ever been. I believe this is the generation of Laodicea. The generation that unknowingly ushers in the great tribulation by our actions or the lack thereof. Now look what happens after the seventh church. Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 through 2. After this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice, which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven, with one seated on the throne. The interesting thing about these verses is I never really paid much attention to them or fully understood what they were saying until I heard a pastor use them to try to prove the pre-tribulation rapture. Verse 1 tells us that John heard a voice from heaven like the sound of a trumpet. It's at the sounding of a trumpet, specifically the last trumpet, that the rapture occurs. So John being called up to heaven in the spirit after the seven letters to the seven angels of the seven churches by a voice like the trumpet would represent the church being called up at the blast of the last trumpet. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 51 through 52 says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we shall be changed. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 through 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Both of these verses tells us that the rapture will take place at the last trumpet. Therefore, how can one say that the rapture takes place before the tribulation and the seven trumpets? It can't. There would be a direct contradiction in scripture. Therefore, the rapture will take place after the great tribulation. But just to clarify, as we try to do in all of our videos on this subject, the great tribulation is not the same as the wrath of God. Tribulation is caused by the church allowing wickedness to abound and overtake righteousness. The wrath of God is the punishment from God on the wicked. It's the wrath of God that the church will escape. Maybe this needs a video on its own as well. 
But while you guys think about all of that, let's sum everything up for you. The seven churches of Revelation are seven actual churches that were around at the time of John, but they also represent the seven ages of the church. The sixth church, Philadelphia, will be kept from the hour of trial coming upon the earth because they kept the word of God by continuing in patient endurance. But the seventh church, Laodicea, because they are neither hot nor cold, they are lukewarm, they will usher in the great tribulation by their actions. This is why Jesus will spit them out of his mouth, because they refuse to follow him in his word. This is the age of the church right now. Therefore, if we do not soon repent, the great tribulation will be upon us sooner than later. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.